all about the stunning lotus block. So stay tuned for some fresh quilty inspiration. Hi quilters, I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilts cutting expert. And I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilts creativity expert. Welcome to today's launch party called Revisit the Stunning Lotus Block. We have officially added the Go Lotus Block 10 inch finish die to our permanent collection. And this is the block that it makes. That's right. So stunning. And we're gonna be joined by some special guests today. First off, we have Gail Kessler of Ladyfinger Sewing Center. She's an AccuQuilt retailer and Barbara Brackman. And I'm so excited to hear what both of them have to share with yes, us today. We have two guests, I love it. I know, and great guests too. Yeah. All right, we have plenty more in store as well. We have some sweet prizes, a quick and e easy project ideas, and a lovely trunk show. I can hardly wait for the trunk show. Yes. Oh, That's so exciting. It. Okay, let's not wait any longer. Let's take us a closer look at our now permanent Go Lotus Block die. With the Go Lotus Block 10 inch finish die, you can add a sense of beauty and tranquility to any quilting project. Creating this delicate flower block is easier than ever with the AccuQuilt system. With just one pass through the Go or Go Big electric fabric cutter, you'll perfectly cut a five color 10 inch finish block in seconds. This elegant block and board or bob die features 14 shapes that include a quarter inch seam allowance, dog-eared corners, screen printed letters, and notches for easy piecing. Try it with different fabrics and colorways to get so many unique looks with just one die. Let your creativity bloom by pairing this die with other compatible bobs and go cube sets, or try it on point with 10 inch setting triangles. Make enticing table runners, comforting throw quilts, striking wall hangings, and more. You'll appreciate how effortless it is to create this stunning block because at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. All right, quilters, before we go into detail about this die, because it's so amazing, we want to share what Gail Kessler of Ladyfinger Sewing Center loves about the Go Lotus Block Die. That's right. Ladyfingers is one of AccuQuilt's wonderful retailers. It's centrally located in the beautiful historic Ole Valley between Pottstown and Reading, Pennsylvania. Ladyfingers is known for stocking fabrics that you may not find everywhere else. They have over seven thousand bolts of fabric. Just makes me so happy. I know it makes it. me want to get on a plane. They also have a fantastic array of threads, notions, books, patterns, everything you need. Besides being the owner of Lady Fingers, Gail has created 140 plus colors of dimples. We love that. That's right. And over fabrics. She's even a crafty instructor, craftsy instructor with over 700,000 students. And in a minute, you'll see why. Gail's collections are featured at Ladies at Lady Fingers along with fabrics from other fine companies such as Hoffman, Robert Kaufman, Michael Miller, P&B, Timeless Treasures, and so many more. All right, Gail, what did you enjoy about the Go Lotus Block die? Hi everyone, I'm Gail Kessler from Ladyfinger Sewing Studio and I'm here today to share with you my latest creation using two of my very favorite quilty things, AccuQuilt, the AccuQuilt cutting system and my line of Dimples fabrics with Andover fabrics. The quilt you see today is featuring one of um, AccuQuilt's latest block on board blocks or bobs called the Lotus die. And you can see here that there are uh, a number of different dimple colors. That is my line of blender fabrics with Andover uh, in two different colorways. Dimples comes in actually a hundred colors and I'll show them to you here. And you can see we have everything from neutrals to very darks red, orange, yellow, greens, browns, every color of the rainbow 
including a number of pastel colors you can see on the right hand side. These, have, these fabrics have been in the line for half, absolutely decades and, are, and is one of the longest running blender fabrics in the industry and for good reason because these colors and this texture goes with just about everything under the sun. So I featured about 12 different colors here in this quilt and I'll show you how I colored it. We have two different block colorations. There are 12, 12 of each color in the quilt, so there's 24 blocks in the entire quilt. The first coloration is done in uh, the what I call the Lady Fingers AccuQuilt Club Colors, which is a bright hot pink and orange with a lime green, teals, and um, the citron color that you see here. The what we like to refer to as the uh, magic lotus midnight garden or midnight magic block is done in two shades of purple, a red violet and more of a, a true purple, along with the same lime green, the same citron, the darker of the two teals. And then tying everything together is one anchor fabric that is uh, baronet blue. It's, it's blue, it's purple, depending on what you put with it, and it, somehow it makes a great accent for the entire quilt that you see here. I liked it so much that uh, I used it to base all of the, the quilt blocks, the same color, and then it just made sense to use it in uh, the piped or the uh, flanged binding that I used. And to follow, to know how to do this, just follow along on Erica and Pam's video on the AccuQuilt YouTube channel and you'll see just how to cut and sew, well, maybe not sew it, but at least how to cut the uh, flange binding. And then I have videos coming up on how to sew it so that you get a right, nice finished edge on both sides. Isn't that cool? Alrighty, so let's talk a little bit about um, how we cut out these blocks and how we sewed them together. Now, time does not allow me to go into great detail here in this quick introductory video, but if you um, sign up for our Lady Fingers AccuQuilt Facebook page and our YouTube channel, you'll see lots of videos on the how to, all the little nuances and the little things that made the Lotus Block even easier to sew. One of the many things I like about doing a block on board or bob die like the Lotus Block is that all of the shapes that you need on, uh, for a given block are all on one die. And let me show you this. I'll bring it over. Okay, so here is the bob die for the Lotus. And you can see that the die shapes are separated a little bit and that's for good reason. You can load up all the background fabrics on this side to do the background colors that you see in the quilt. I have, or not this part, but this part <laughs> in the blocks. And if you, you may or may not be able to see this on camera, but I actually used three different background colors in this quilt. It's not white, it could be white, but I chose to use a light blue, a light teal, and then the setting triangles is done in a light purple. For the blocks, the flower uh, shapes are all up here. The leaf fabrics are all here and the background fabrics for the block are all over here. Since um, I thought that the layout of the colors that AccuQuilt chose for their cover was quite nice, I followed along pretty much the same um, deal. I, I made my flowers the same you know, colors here and here, two different colors here and here, two different colors here and here for the flowers because I thought that looked really pretty. But I did switch up the greens. I didn't make the greens all the same. So there I would have to pay attention and make an adjustment to my, to my cutting chart, which I did. The nice thing about AccuQuilt, one of the greatest things I really love about AccuQuilt is you can take a concept and run with it. So I made adjustments to, the, to this bob die. So I'm gonna call it beyond the bob. <laughs> in, in my quilt, I chose to first of all, change the bottom of the block here. This is the bottom of this block, this is the bottom of this block. And what I found, realized is that 
here and here, there's a square and two triangles on the die board. And let me show it to you. Um, actually, maybe Bill can just zoom in on the page here. But you can see, if he can get in there a little bit, that we're using two triangles and a square to form one large triangle. Now that's great, especially if you're shading those two triangle units differently. But since they're all the same fabric, for me and my time and my fabric use, I decided to make this one shape. And luckily, of course, AccuQuilt has a die for that. And the secret sauce is on our Lady Fingers Club Facebook page, what dye that is. It uh, comes from a cube, and um, it worked perfectly so that I didn't have to cut, sew one, two, three, four more seams for every block. Times 24, that's 96 more seams that I didn't have to sew because I figured out how to sub out that block. Isn't that great? The other thing that I changed about the block is you can see that there is space between the blocks here and here and here and here. And that's because of the way I designed this quilt in Electric Quilt. I design all my, my quilts in Electric Quilt software. I'm an Electric Quilt artist, and um, so I've been using the, the software for quite a long time. By using the one and a half inch strip die on two sides of the lotus block, I've now created a 12 inch lotus block, isn't that great? And it gave the quilt the space that I wanted to show off Sharon Gower's long arm charm of uh, Effort, Pennsylvania. She quilted the quilt for me beautifully to show off her quilting. And uh, I think she did it perfectly and I love it. Um, but this gave the space that I needed. So see again, you can take a 10 inch block and turn it into a 12 inch block just like that. So for more tips and tricks and to find out more secret, secrets to this, this quilt, be sure to uh, sign up for the Lady Fingers newsletter. Go to ladyfingerssewing.com. Sign up for our Lady Fingers AccuQuilt Club Facebook page and follow us on Lady Fingers Sewing on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, Gail did a fabulous, she did a fabulous, fabulous job. job. And can I say how much I love her dimples fabrics, but those colors that she had in right. there, they the, glow. And the background colors were different. You know, there was mm -hmm. a light blue and a light teal and a light purple and 150 colors of dimples. I want a bolt amazing. of every color. I do too. Okay, but we the do. thing that I thought was so amazing was she figured out the shape from the cube that she could use to, so she yes. didn't have to put those 96 seams in. Right. So that's one of the great things about Bob dies is how not only do they make a block and board, but you can think about, you know, shapes that you can use from your right. cube to make right. those. So be sure to go to Ladyfinger Sewing. Um, you can check out their website, sign up for their newsletter, be part of their Facebook page. Uh, that is not a pattern we have available here. No, at that is Gail's. That is Gail's. So if you want to make that, um, it's just fabulous. It is. All right. I just, I just love seeing what other quilters come up with and get Gail and her team did a great job. They really are so talented. All right, we're gonna take a minute now to take a look at the die, mm -hmm. how it's organized, and really help you cut and sew and put this block together, right? Right, okay, so first of all, it's on a 10 by 24 die board, so it's gonna fit through our go mm -hmm. and our go bag. Right. And just like Gail was talking about, it's organized by color. So here's, um, these are, well, by shapes, actually. So here's right. the outer background. Here are the leaves, all right? And then the leaves are the green, and then here are the pinks. Yes. And I think that it's super cool to think about how you place the fabric, obviously, is gonna change up the colorway. Right. And you have some right. colorways that we wanna do, but let's let's lay out our fabric and talk about it. Yes. All right, so you're gonna need more of I and K, and our pattern gives you those subcutting instructions. Yes. And these are not directional, so we can fan fold back and forth. Well, they actually are directional, so you need to fan fold. Oh, that's the word I was looking there for. There you Thank go. Thank you. Sometimes I have to think about that. I know, but I prepped the fabric for today, so she I'm did. gonna. Okay. So here we go. We're gonna cover, this is that dark green. Right here. Now, these are the leaves. So again, we need to fan fold. So we're gonna, right. we've got two layers. This is gonna cut our four 
of those light green pieces. Right, and let's talk about that. Okay, see how the bottom one goes in one direction and the top goes in the other. So, so we're we going need to Chicago left. and to and, Denver. Yes, we need a left and a right, okay? All right, now these, again, this is just like, kind of like our chisel shape. It is. And it's directional. Now the other thing that's cool about this is that we've added notches. Right. And those notches are gonna match up. So if you go to put shape B onto yes. D instead of C, and there's no notch, there's no match. Right, right? because, yes, because in your quilting head you think, oh, those are the same shape and they are not. They are not. So we're gonna put that on there so you remember. Then we've got our shape Bs, and mm -hmm. here we go to shape A, and we're gonna be cutting both the background fabric, which is a cool, I don't know if you can tell. It's, it's like a, a fairy it frost. It is a fairy frost by Michael Miller, so it's got some sheen and some sparkle to it. And then we're gonna cut this. Now you're gonna have one extra, I think, piece on that, but I that's think, okay. I think we can don't live with don't that. sweat it. Okay. All right, you're gonna need a 10 by 24 uh, cutting mat. And like I say, it'll fit through our go and our go big. I'm going to move my water here. So oh, yes. Spill things. <laughs> um, I think that I love the fact that Gail talked about how this makes a 10-inch block. Yes. But she used a one-inch finished to create, um, a, you know, around it to create right. a 12-inch block. Right. And because we I can... think sometimes we think that we think, oh, it's a 10-inch block. We can only make, you know, a 10-inch block. Right. We can only make 10-inch blocks. But you can add sashing and borders. Oh, it is so staticky here in the Dream yep. Studio today. We, we had some escape. We did. Okay. But that's okay. That's why we tell you to slide, don't let. That's right. <laughs> All right, so let's take this off. We're gonna see what we've got to work with here. Okay. Do to do, do. We had a really good time sewing this block together. It really did. It goes together really well. And the other thing that really helps is when you look at the ends. These are very specialized dog ears, right? Right. These are not our standard dog ears, and that's gonna make them fit together perfectly. So right. if you were, here we go. This is gonna show you exactly how that's gonna work together. And they're flat. So we're gonna put this down. Look how that shape works around that corner. Right. You're gonna sew your perfect quarter inch seam allowance, and then, look at this, when you press it, you're done. Right. There's yeah, no going trip. back and trimming, which yeah, is perfect. No trimming. no trimming. And again, right. these notches, that's going to help you know where right. you're going, right? Because these pink, they come here. Uh, and there's no, they no don't. notch. No, there's no notch. Okay. So Hold this on, is a go. mirror image. Oh, there we go. So if we put put this one on point, we're going to build kind of out on point. And they're kind of different fabrics, but you'll get the idea. Okay. We're right. still pink. All right, so there is our shape K, and now we need a big white yes. shape A. Mm -hmm. Okay. And notice. Yeah, you were right. Is that right? Yes. I trust the process, Erica. Trust the there process. we go. There we go. It's because it's on point. It was sending me off just know, a little. Oh, I know. Okay, now this one. And oh boy, when we tell you to make a test block, this is why. This is why. And now, some of you are gonna think we need a little half square triangle down here. That is not but true. look, this is gonna create that line that we need. There you go. Yes, yes, there are seam allowances. That's correct. Okay. Trust in the force, Pam. Trust in it. I know, I'm so nervous about it today. I don't know why. <laughs> so I, nervous. I just sewed this block for I know, out I it's know. So All right, now look. Again, we're keeping it there. We're there you go. Building the force here. Okay. That's right. And then this, this is why we write directions, right? Right. Now you can find download free downloadable patterns. Mm -hmm. You can find free downloadable block assembly directions on the Lotus Blossoms uh, page on the website. Mm -hmm. You can also find the video there, Miss Pam and I making this box so you can see just how to do it. And we sewed it together perfectly. We did, we All did. Right, so you wanna do a left and a right here and then we can show them. And this is one of those cases where you really do need to follow those directions because you'll be putting together your mirrored sides of the top of the flower. I know, you just can't help yourself. Um, 
you're gonna put together this kind of block in here. And you know what? You could even use that block as a block if you wanted to. I mean, there's okay. so many options. But then you're gonna put together this section. Right, so you're- Then you're gonna put together, so you have to follow those block assembly directions. Right, because you're gonna sew that um, square and then you're gonna add this side mm -hmm. and then this is a longer piece. A longer piece, yeah. And this is the side and this is a longer piece because we've added those squares. Right. Okay. So it goes together differently. I like it a lot. But it's really simple. If you can sew a quarter inch seam, you can make this with no problem. And Eric and I, this is such a great chain piecing because you're just gonna sew those half yep. square triangles. Um, we are gonna tell you quilters that you wanna press your seams open. Oh yes. Um, there's just a lot of bulk that's gonna happen if you don't. And all of those seams we're gonna press open. Yes. All right, so, oh Erica. Good job. I by know. The way, prepping I know. all the fabric for us. I know. So now we can make it. All right. We're being floral today. <laughs> since today's show is all about the Go Lotus block, we want to know, quilters, here's the question of the day. What flower do you want to see as a block on board or bob die? That's right. Let us know in the comments section wherever you stream our show. Now, we've had lots of quilters over the years, including myself be interested in doing a dahlia. Yes, yes, I think that would be lovely. Also, I would love to see a daffodil. A daffodil would be because stunning. Because I feel like it, you know, you would piece it kind of like mm -hmm. the lotus block and keep yes. an outward. We'll have to tell the Gibney. Now, in the studio, we had the suggestion of a Venus flytrap. Yes. However, it was then suggested that the Go Pickle dish could be used to make a Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap. So this means that we have a brilliant live stream team. We and do. Okay, once in a while they actually listen to us, right? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. I do like that idea though. In I my quilting too. head, I was trying to figure out how to make that work. Yep. All right, and Gil did such a fun job of working with this block. So let's talk about some different ways to use this block. It is such a stunning project. That's right. Now. We mentioned one way to change it up would just be to use the flower portion of the block. Mm -hmm. But another way to change a whole project is by adding or not adding sashing and cornerstones. So sashing and cornerstones are the strips that go between your box and rows. Mm -hmm. And then cornerstones are those squares where those strips intersect. Right. And you can lay them, I mean, you can lay them any way. They could all be going the same way. They could be going together. Let's leave them like this and take a look. So together, you put four of them together, you're gonna form a square here in the center. Right, and then you're gonna get this cool secondary design right. that comes together. So let's look at changing things up again with a narrow strip. Yep. So here's a narrow, this is the one inch finished, one and a half inch cut. Which Gail talked about to make it into a 12 inch block. Right, and then here's a longer strip that we can see across the bottom. So this is just with the sashing. Oh, there you go. Which is very pretty. Okay. But what if we add that cornerstone? And I think that that's super cool. So I like that view. Here's with green, but look how it changes if we change that to a pink. Oh, see? See, that changes the whole thing mm -hmm. because this way, it makes me think of a shoe fly block. Oh yeah, very much so. But I pull that out and put the pink there and it's a whole different thing. Right, and think about making it uh, totally scrappy. Right. I mean, I just think that that right. would be neat. Okay, now let's look to see if we make the sashing wider. Right, right. so let's pull this. Now I used our one and only two and a half inch strip die that finishes at two inches. And let's put that nice chunky sashing between Oh, there. I do like that chunky. And then we're gonna take and put this across the bottom. And again, let's look at it without a cornerstone. See, I like that. It really showcases too. those blocks. I do bottom. too. And it really focuses your eye. Let's look at what happens when we add those cornerstones. Oh my again. gosh, now it's a huge shoe fly block. Here's a shoot. But again, we can change that look too and put pink in there. I'm kind of liking the pink version. I'm kind of liking the pink. I like them both. Or you could be alternating them. What if you had the pink up there 
And we had some. Oh, sashing there. Some sash. Take a look at how it would be. Ah, this is a great way to think about blocks. You know, up there. Okay. So there's a lot of different looks you can just do with this. Okay. Now you could also change the look by adding a 10 inch block, a 10 inch square. Okay. And you could use that. That could be a block made with your 10 inch cube or it could be another 10 inch finished die like uh, Go Mosaic number four. Here we go. So let's pull that out. Okay, and I feel like these here, let's turn them on point because they look so cool oh. on point. I feel like this is such a cool combination. This is a cool it combination. It gets the 3D look just like this does mm -hmm. with that X in the middle. So you could actually use the same colors for that. I do think that's cool. There, there's something and look, going and on there. Right or, there. what if you do this? Uh oh, look at that. Look at that. That's right. a whole nother look. So let's think about, this is our mosaic number four. How about our rising star? Oh, I love that. See, I think that's cool. And if you did like contrasting colors with it, that would be really fun. Yes. Okay, like this is great. Okay, and then... Don't you love that we have all of our flocks? Okay, this <laughs> yeah. one actually is probably one of my favorites because yes. Tangle Star, and I like the colorway. If it was in the same colorway, mm -hmm. I just feel like that would be such a pretty combination, mm -hmm. right? Right, or maybe like you're a, building one, like a big one. design like this, so then they're going every other direction. That's gonna create another. Oh, yes. Or if then maybe you, you had one. You could use our 10-inch uh, squares here on right? the side. Maybe we're, we're all focusing in mm -hmm. towards the center. Okay. There's a lot of options with this. Oh, what if you did this? Okay, we're good, we're good. Okay, keep going. So many ideas. And of course, you can always jump in and create a new look with any pattern just by using different colors, different fabrics. And we've got Go Quilt, which is a free design resource on our website to help you do that. Change thousands of colors on yes. thousands of patterns. Yes. Now that we've discussed it in depth, let's give away a Go Lotus block die to a lucky viewer who registered for today's show. All right, quilters, the first lucky winner of a Go Lotus block 10 inch finished die is, drum roll please. It's Susie J from Gary, Indiana. Congratulations. Congratulations. Susie, you're gonna love this guy. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana. Indiana. Okay. okay, I am glad we were able to have one of our retailers join us for today's show. And even happier that now we've got Barbara Brackman to Two join amazing us. amazing guests. Yes, with the history of the Go Lotus block. All right, for those of you who aren't familiar with her, Barbara is an independent researcher who has published numerous books about quilts and quilt history. Among them are the recently revised Encyclopedia of Quilt Patterns, Peace Quilt Patterns, Eric and I both own that. On our desks at all times. Index has published patterns from 1880 to 1970. And it's a companion uh, computer program, Block Base Plus, which is available on the AccuQuilt That's website. Right. She is one of the founding members of the American Quilt Study Group. She writes a blog about quilt history and material culture. Check her out. She's amazing. That's right. All right, Barbara, take it away. Hi, it's Barbara Brackman here. And we're going to be talking about a die from AccuQuilt, the Lotus today. So let me start my slideshow and uh, we'll get started. Well, today we're gonna be talking about the Lotus die. And this is a pink and green model here that's really pretty dramatic. You can see there's a lot of complex pieces, which is why it's great to have a die. The block finishes to 10 inches. Well, Pam and friends get their ideas from my Encyclopedia of Peace Quilt Patterns, which makes it real easy for me to find the block in question. This uh, Lotus block was from the Nancy Cabot column in the Chicago Tribune in 1938. And I've talked about Nancy Cabot before. She's kind of a fictional person like Betty Crocker. And she uh, liked to talk, she as a, as a fake person, liked to talk about quilt history. And she always told you that the block was very old. Now this one's, she says, 
was she saw a quilt from 1900 or so. And that's what inspired her to make this block. I doubt very seriously, Nancy, if that is true because it's it's so modern. And you can see that she might have been influenced by a pineapple, peach pineapple, but this is definitely a modern block designed in 1938 at the at the height of the um, height of the the move for modernism from everything from quilts to uh, architecture and to fabric designs. Well, let's look at modernism because it's something that we we sort of have a revival of right now. I have been an artist more, all my life, and I would be very pleased to have uh, created that lotus watercolor over there. That's the sort of my style, um, although that's not mine. That is uh, AI, Photoshop, uh, making a watercolor out of a photo. But I wanted to point out some of the, the principles of art in general, and then how they can be adapted to modernism or not even adapted, but contradicted by modernism. So you look at the, the watercolor of that beautiful little white lotus floating in a pond, and you see several things that uh, help you define what it looks like and also what makes a pleasing composition. One is lines, and up here we have you know, lines showing us where the leaves are, lines in the flower showing us the shading. We also have what's called modern, or excuse me, modulated color. I mean, the whites in this lotus go from a very gray shade up through a pinkish to white, and that is called modulated color. Um, and it's what line and color have what, what sh and shading, what artists have used for centuries to um, depict nature, people, their environment. Well, one of the basic principles of modernism, modernism is abstraction. You take what's out there in nature, and if you're going to put it on a piece of paper, you have to abstract it to some degree. But modernism was, modernism, I guess I'm not going to be able to say that right. Um, modernism was about really hardcore abstraction, just minimal, taking the minimal uh, imagery and having it um, depict, in this case, nature, in this case, a white lotus. Another principle of modernism was unmodulated color. And we see that in paintings of the time, you know, all the lithographs and art of the time. That means in quilts, solid colors. And today, our modernistic uh, movement certainly focuses an awfully lot on solid colors rather than prints, which kind of take away from the, the minimalism and the, the abstraction. So another thing about modernism is minimalism, as I said. And if you were really modern, a member of the Bauhaus in Germany, you were supposed to stick to three shapes, squares, triangles, and circles. And here we have a woman in a great lace collar from the era. I mean, three shapes, that's not much. But Bauhaus people loved experimenting with that. And, and uh, if you look at modernism, you see an awful lot of that minimal shape. And you look at quilts, and you can see why quilts appeal to the modernist, too. So minimalism. If you're going to look at this particular pattern, there are triangles that can be emphasized. But there are other shapes, too. So. One another principle of modernism is line just for the sake of line. And as I said uh, earlier, the traditional art used line to depict nature, but it's also a great, great uh, item in composition. You can see this woman with the very cute little dog there, the hula hoop, which I think was stainless steel in the in the 30s when that photo was taken and the wonderful striped outfit. The idea of line just for line's sake is evident in that, that 1915 painting. I mean, those are the shapes we see in the, in the pattern to the lotus. So here's one I designed. 
um, I figure if we're going to have line and we're going to have minimal color, uh, you know, unmodulated and solid, we're going to use black and white because it looks really, really good. So that's that's one of my ideas for using the Lotus block. I'm sure you'll have many, but do consider it as a, as a good example of modernism. And somebody at the Chicago Tribune was uh, pretty good at designing quilt patterns, but uh, it wasn't from a quilt in 1900. It's definitely late 30s ideas. So thanks a lot for having me. And I'll be back to talk about it another die some other day. Bye-bye. Okay, fascinating, fascinating she, history. She just knows so much stuff. She does. And and how that just, I mean, those same principles of, of modernism mm -hmm. are going to be what you see if you go to an art gallery right. or a quilt gallery, right? Yeah, and I love the whole what? Only three shades? <laughs> That's great. Okay, my <laughs> favorite coloration, though, was like the background was that light yellow and the light green and then the white and the gray. Yes, yes. I did love that. And and the one that had the leaves different widths, that yes. was really interesting. Yes. But again, when she put the, in her mock-up and she had four together, you got that square mm -hmm. in the center. That blue and white mm -hmm. and yellow. Mm -hmm. All right, well, a huge shout out to Barbara Beckman for joining us today. And after hearing Barbara's block history lesson, I think we should give away another Go Lotus Block die. Absolutely. All right, quilters, our second lucky winner of a Go Lotus Block 10 inch finish die is, drum roll please. It's Mary Lynn S. from Conway, Arkansas. Congratulations. Oh my gosh, you're gonna love it. All right, pictures, I'm super excited to show off our trunk show today, but let's talk about a few different ways to set up this block for success by setting it on point. Right, and we started talking about that a little earlier, didn't we, you clever girl? But let's actually lay it out in front of us and talk about that. This block is fantastic on point, meaning standing on its tiptoe. Hold, please. What did you do with them? And they oh, fell on the floor. They fell. <laughs> was they for they them. jumped. They um, jumped. This is a great way to show it off, and it's easy to do, but it hasn't always been easy to sew, right? Oh, heavens no. Now we have setting triangle dies. That's right. There is no math, and you can make sure the tight lengthwise grain towards the outside of your project, so it's a win-win. That's so right. So here's, um, you want, our setting triangles match the sides of the block, so this is a 10 inch setting triangle. Right. And um, here's the sides and the corners. So um, I'll give you a corner, Erica, and then okay. I'll do the side and we'll talk about it. Perfect. And we saw Gail use these on her pattern, right? Yes, we did. Right, so now we've cut them, so this is that nice, tight, lengthwise mm -hmm. screen. Exactly. Previously, before there were dies, I did all sorts of wonky things where I just cut a square and kind of lopped it in half and sewed it and hoped it worked. And then you had your bias on the outside and then you had to be really careful with yeah. it and it yeah. was hard. And don't forget, we don't have Gail's pattern on our website, but you can uh, check out uh, Lady Fingers and they'll help you. That's right. That's now the right. other thing, oh goodness, I keep pounding on the table. Stop pounding. Sorry, okay. there we go. The other thing that Gail did so was excited. use the side setting triangles to create a larger corner setting triangles like this. So if you're doing that, you're gonna have your corner more like this. Yes. And this. Yeah, look at that. Now you're gonna notice in lots of our AccuQuilt patterns, we do that where we take the side yes. triangles and create those setting triangles. And then continue around with the side setting triangles. So you take one, I'll take one. Okay. But this is going to give you a little bit more border. It's going to get, set it off a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have more of your background fabric up in the corner than if you just have the one corner square. I like it. Good job, Gail, for teaching us that little trick. Yes, absolutely. All right, with all this inspiration, I think everybody's ready to see even more with the trunk show. What do you think? Oh my gosh, let's do it. Okay. Okay. First, we have the uh, Lotus Moon Stars while hanging by our good friend Marianne Fontana from Fontana Originals. And I'm going to step back and you're going to talk about this. Yes, this because is this is cool. exactly what we just talked about. A, 
fabulous colors and batiks, but here we've got two of those side setting triangles put together just like we laid out on the table in action. Isn't that fabulous? And our, <laughs> interestingly enough, our friend the rising star here in the center. Right. So again, here you're seeing it in action, just exactly what we've talked about, another block, set off by those and putting them on point and using those side setting triangles exclusively to be on the sides as well as the corners. This one's yeah. great because you just need to make six blocks. And all the patterns that these are in our trunk show are free patterns at accuquilt.com. That's right. Now right. this next one is the Go Modern Lotus Throw Quilt. I do love Having this by Susie Lester. just Wester. talked about all of those principles of modernism, here's a look at this one. and. I love it, it's all in solids. Mm -hmm. It's in that very modern palette of black, red, white, and gray. Yes. And just changing the alternate. And then this is just a half block, remember? We talked yeah. about it being a mirror image. Right. And that's really clever so that it, it just flows. It doesn't stop. It just runs off the edge of the quilt. We gotta show you the back because she quilted it in three different colors. That and I love the quilting and these mm -hmm. two close lines together within the big space. Right. I love that look. Good job, Susie. All right, this next one I think is my favorite. And this is the lovely Lotus Throw Quilt by our really good friend, Stephanie Jacobs. Uh, Jacobson of Steph Jacobson's designs. She lives here in Omaha, Nebraska, and she used a mode of fabric. All right, Erica loves everything about this because it's Everything purple. about it. For one thing, we've got two colors of purple going here with our lotus block, which almost makes them look like a thistle, I think. It does, it's beautiful. Um, and then we've got shape number one from our 10 inch cube to make four patches. I mean, how sim it doesn't get much simpler than that. Right. This is shape number three, so these are half square triangles so that we get a big flying yes, geese. Yes, you, and your quilting is gonna be five by geese. 10 yep. flying geese, and it is just a stunner. Steph did a great job. And this is grunge, which is by Basic Gray for Moda. Just extra points. And fabulous quilting. All right, this next one. This is the Go Floating Lotus Blossom Table Runner by Marianne Fontana, Fontana Originals. And this is kind of that um, like modern retro color. Right, and you saw, you saw Barbara talk about this one. And to me, this has a very art deco feel. That's the word I was looking for. Yes. Yeah, those teals and grays and black. And she set it on point. Mm -hmm. We talk about this a lot. You don't always have to make a quilt. You can just make a table runner. That's right. But some of these projects that we've shown only need six blocks to be in with. Right. So. Right, and great quilting. Again, we've got a very tight little stipple and then stitch in the ditch around the part pieces so that those petals really pop. It's beautiful. Well, we took to go quilt to whip up some other options as far as color, so let's take a look at those. Oh my gosh, okay, I actually love the one in the center. So the one in the center, I'm surprised, but the one in the center is really sweet. It gives you that spring, Yes. I know, it kind of looked like a spring tulip to me, right? Well, that's what I thought. And then I do love the purple one on the bottom. Yes. Well, and I thank you for that. Yes. All right. So here's our next one. Now, this one has our, really has our lotus as a flower. It's the Sweet Lotus Flowers Throw Quilt. This is by Heidi Pridemore of the Whimsical Workshop. Hi, Heidi. And okay. she's used strip dyes to create stems here. She's used signature block for the leaves, so clever. And I think, Erica, this has a real like desert feel to it, right? Mm -hmm. The colors are very much desert. So if you're living in Arizona or one of those hot states where it's, I don't know, 187 degrees. And not a cloud in the sky behind yeah, it, right? I just think these are such pretty colors together. Well, let's like take it. a look at some alternative colors then. Okay, the one on the left actually is my all-time favorite. It looks like um, Indian corn. Right, but right. It also could be sunflower. Definitely a fall feel. I thought about sunflowers, you thought about Indian corn. And then isn't it interesting with the other two, what a difference it makes when you take that background and take it from a white solid to a black print. Yep, I agree. I like it a lot. Exactly the same other than that. Well, the next one, Oh, we love this one a lot. This oh, is the Go do. Lotus Garden Throw Quilt by Mitzi Red of Red Homestead. 
and there's a top yes, and a bottom. There is a top and a bottom, and I have it upside down. There we go. All right, Mitzi did a great job with this. And again, I love how the lotus wax are set on point. Mm -hmm. I like that they're white the, and that gray, kind of grayish white. And you get the feel of them floating in a pond. Yes. Me. And then the quilting here is really pulling out those petals. This is the curved yep. petal scent. And I love how it plays with the jagged lines and then the curved lines. Yeah, Mitzi did a great job. And then she added a, a couple of borders to it. Mm -hmm which really makes the project stand out. Just, and this really just looks like water to me. It does. Really I does. like it a lot. Well, we love that coloration, but let's take a look at some options. Oh my gosh, the one on the left. So the one on the left is kind of Halloween colors, but yes. look at those black lotus flowers. I, okay, I thought I for sure should make a black lotus block because I just think that that's such a stark color. It I is. I love that with and, the green and the gray. And I think you could change it up too and have a really distinct look than the, the green and the, the black, um, but maybe some light blues or teals oh, then there that go. really set off those black lotus flowers. And you could do black in a couple of, you know, different colors of mm -hmm. gray and black. And the center one looks like stripes. They're so cute. Yeah, so this is very much like one of our patterns. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, set a little differently. Yep. yep, and the one on the right is beautiful because it's just solid. Right, and, and the solid color, when you do all the petals the same color, it's a very different look, isn't it, than mm -hmm. alternating them. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right, we've got one more. This is the... Uh, the pattern that's on the packaging, all my words are gone. This is the Go Lotus Block while hanging by her good friend Gina Jempasov of Gem Hill Quilts. And this is a perfect example how Gina used sashing and cornerstones between the blocks. Right, so here you see that narrow sashing that we started with, that matching green cornerstone, creating that shoe fly look in the center, really pulls your eye to the center. Mm -hmm. And then with the points, it really pulls it out to the corner. And this is like a great weekend project. You don't always have to make a quilt. You could make a wall right. hanging or a tabletop or a table runner. This is, or pillows. Right. This is so pretty. If you have one of those big autumn, big square ottomans. We have one. This would be great to, ha to have on top of there to change up your look for the seasons. Pearl could have a new place Pearl to could lay. Have, or Pearl the cat. a new place for the cat and the dog. That's me hitting okay. the, here. Would you stop Let's hitting stop. the table? Jeez. Twice now I've done that, apologies. <laughs> All right, so those are our looks. And again, those are made with, oh, we, we have, have some, some different looks. Okay. Yes, I was gonna hit the table, but heaven forbid. Heaven yeah. forbid. Okay, the one on the left is very stunning. It's very much like the one Barbara Brockman had. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the ink, I like the blue. She liked the blue and yellow combination like I did. And then the one in the center almost gives you a, a Christmassy feel, kind of a- Christmas almost, cactus. Christmas cactus, yes, exactly. And then again with that almost fall or Indian corn look on the yeah. side. All right. Besides the Go Quilt variations, all of these patterns are available as free downloads on the AccuQuilt website. Be sure to download your pattern before your die arrives so you'll be all ready to go. Now, before we check and see what's in our fabric mailbox to give away what? to a couple of lucky quilters, we've got an exciting announcement, Pam. Oh, yes, we do. AccuQuilt has some very exciting new products that are available on our website starting now. Take a look. Hi, I'm Jill from June Taylor. We've all heard of paint by number. Now we have sew by number. This is called quilt as you go where the pattern is actually printed right on the batting. We start out by cutting around our printed batting and we're gonna attach our backing fabric. And to do that, we can either use quilt basting spray by spraying it on the batting or we can use our fabric glue stick. This goes on purple, but it dries clear. We're going to cut all our pieces to the side that the directions tell us. We like to starch our fabrics first to get them nice and stiff. And then we're gonna simply follow the directions. So put piece number one in the number one spot like this. Piece number two, right sides together with piece number one on the placement line between one and two. And now you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And we're gonna continue on in the same manner. And we're done with our finished placemat. 
Oh, these are such exciting, fantastic products to help you with your quilting journey. We can't wait to share more with about them with you in the upcoming weeks. Be sure you check out our blog for more information. Couple of our new favorite accessories for right helping here, us out. Right here, I'm excited about it. Uh, June Taylor is Quilts As You Go. It's been around for a long, long time and we are super excited to have them on our uh, website. Works really well with our dyes. I know. So Two stay tuned for more information. For okay, now is it Facebook? Now it's, fa fabric. Now fabric. it's fabric time. Fabric, Facebook time. Okay, here we go. I or one fabric day, I'm mailbox just, time. Fabric mailbox. I'm always open it away from me. Uh, oh, oh my gosh. We knew this would be good, didn't we? <gasps> oh my goodness. Oh. Free spirit did not disappoint. Oh, these are beautiful bundles of and talk about florals. These are K Fast yes. by K Facet, who's known for his bright, bold florals. These Look are just beautiful. These are stunning. They say we have to give them away. I know, I know, but oh gosh, those are pretty. All right. Oh, uh, some lucky winners. Okay, the first winner of a selection of beautiful free spirit fabric is Drumroll, please. Monica S. of Indianapolis, Indiana. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, the second winner of a selection of fabric is Drumroll, please. Andrea G. from Littleton, New Hampshire. Congratulations. Congratulations. Pam, you were counting those to see if you could steal one out. You can't. No, look, this one, though, right here in the middle of this hot pink one. Yes. These are the colors of, like, our lotus block. Oh, yes. Okay, so they say we have to, to give it away. Them. Again, they let me send out the fabric. I don't know who made that executive decision, but a huge shout out to Free Spirit for sponsoring today's show. Our quilters are going to love making their next Lotus Block projects with this fabric, and they totally can. That's right. Okay, quilters. Now, it's time to hear what you had to say. We ask what flowers you'd like to see made as bob dyes, and it's time to share your answers. So a couple of you uh, wanted to be with me and... Um, Wendy said daffodils. Yes. Because we love yes. that. Okay. And Pat F. wants a poppy. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Jody G. said pansy. You know, pansies are one of my favorites. They are. And this one I think could really work. The, uh, Marilyn wants a big rose, not a little rose. Not a, a little big rose, rose. A big rose. Yes. Okay. Um, Carol G. was with me for the dahlia. Yes. Yes. And Brenda uh, wants an orchid. Oh, which yes. Which I think is great. Now, Thelma C., she wants a sunflower, and I don't think we're too far from that with our lotus block. You know, or, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. The other one is, if you didn't catch our quilt along with AQS, with the morning star dye, oh, we yes. had one of the quilters make that as a giant sunflower, and it was stunning. You might want to go and check that blog post out, I too. remember. Yes. That was beautiful. Okay, um, Pam, not me, wants a lily and not in a basket. I oh, get okay. That. I get yes. that. Yes, just the lily by itself. Okay, we learned something today from Isabel. Yes, a yellow jessamine, which, which is the state flower for South, South Carolina. Carolina. We learned it. We did. Nancy D said carnations, oh, that's which would beautiful. be really pretty. And I think we're close to that maybe with our, our lotus block too. Mm -hmm. You know how they're kind of ruffly? Oh, yes. That kind of ruffled look. And Becky F wants an iris. Oh. Which I love oh, in I all love the iris. deep, yes. gorgeous colors. All right, so we're gonna send that to our product development team. Thanks for all your suggestions. That's right. Quilters, don't forget, we have tons of great deals for you available on our website. We do, and to get your order in, you just need to open a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com slash party, go to the site, see the offers, place that order. Okay, Erica, is it still July? It is still July. We are still celebrating Christmas yes, in July. Are. One deal we have going right now is get 25% off your online order with the code CHRISTMAS. That's right. Now, some exceptions to apply, like the Go Lotus Block die is not included because in this offer because it's considered a new die yes. for our permanent collection. So check out the website for details. And speaking of our permanent collection, yes. we have already sold out of this month's die to try the Go Tea Party die. Yes. But quilters, you can vote to bring it back. Uh, just go to the project page and wrote, uh, vote to bring it back. 
if you were unable to snag yours on the website, be sure to check your local retailer. They might still have some in stock. That's right, that's right. Now we've also sold out of our first shipment of the Go Tree Skirt Wedge Die right away right too. Right away. But don't worry quilters, we've got more coming and we will have this popular die back in stock soon. Also, again, check with your local retailer. They may still have some available. Okay. All right, quilters, it's time to get ready for our next show. We hope that today's trunk show was just what you needed to inspire you to revisit the stunning Lotus Block. See you next time. Thanks for watching our show. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and look for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can visit the events page on AccuQuilt's website for more details on upcoming shows. And while you're there, check out the blog for tips, tricks, tutorials, and inspiration galore. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Quilters, so join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. We have tons of fun. Tomorrow, we're having our third Quilts of Valor show and kicking off, get this, the fourth 2023 AQS Quilt Along series. Plus, you want to watch to see if you've won a door prize that we're giving away during the show. And come back every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for more launch parties and trunk shows. These events are filled with tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be sharing an exclusive look at some of the new June Taylor products. We can't wait to see you there.